We are going live in five, four, three, two, one. I've been doing my studio work. Hold on. It may take longer. Let's see when it goes live. Oh, there we go. Let's switch profiles. Let's see if that does it. How do I not have permissions to go live? One second. Fuck it. I'll go live on my timeline. Let's see if that fucking helps. Hold on. How do I... Stand by. I don't have fucking permissions to go live. Are you fucking kidding me? Stand by. I'm having an issue. I'm not able to go live. Hold on. What the entire fuck? When did this change? What the hell is going on? Stand by. I don't know why this isn't working. I'm trying to go. Hold on. There we go. We're live on Super Dante Barnett. Go ahead, you guys. All right. Welcome to the Social Security Influencers Show. <laughs> this is our 10th show. We started May of 2021. And uh, the uh, gift for the 10th anniversary is aluminum. So uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be passing out gutters to everyone. <laughs> I'm your host, Al Casalia. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Dante Barnett uh, for producing the show and Suitman Productions. Uh, they do a lot of good for uh, minority and disabled entertainers through podcasts and comedy shows. And today is the old people show. Let's hear it. <laughs> we are all old. We're here for the early bird special. On a Saturday <laughs> afternoon. But we're funny. And I like to think we're funnier than younger comics. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're all old. I am 73, damn it. Woo, yay. My name is Al Coselia. Al Coselia. It sounds like Al Coselta. <laughs> plop plop fizz fizz oh what a relief i is quick mention about the writer strike still going on i support it 100 percent completely as you'll see from my set <laughs> that's a giggler huh? <laughs> i had a wonderful <laughs> moment last week my grandson for the first time said i love you grandpa Fifty. Now that's impossible. <laughs> I would have had to have a kid at twelve, and that kid would have had to have a kid at twelve. And I'm not from Arkansas. <laughs> I live in Texas. I've lived in Texas for forty years, so I like to think I'm a Texan, y'all. Yeah. Yeah, they don't think of me a Tex as a Texan. <laughs> I have a master's degree in entomology. Entomology is the study of insects. Ooh. What's crazy is I'll tell people that and they'll say, what, etymology? Etymology is the study of words and synonyms. Entomology is the study of insects. But either way you look at it, whether you're an etymologist or an etymologist, the, the synonyms are the same. Geek, nerd, and undateable. <laughs> 
but please give me a little bit of credit. I worked on the alfalfa weevil, <laughs> which is a beetle. And, you know, at least I didn't work on the dung beetle. Who wants to tell people they worked on dung? <laughs> yeah, that's shit. That's right. The alfalfa weevil is kind of cute. It has a snout and it, and it doesn't eat dung. Yeah, undateable. That's right. <laughs> I'm old, so uh, getting old is scary, as you all know. And you know how I know that? I saw a 19-year-old comic say that. 19. Getting old is scary. Then she gets on stage. She's funny. She looks like little orphan Annie. I get up there. I look like the old guy from Up. <laughs> Being old, I blame everything on arthritis. No laugh. It's definitely arthritis. <laughs> I joined the comedy world about five years ago. And, uh, you know, all the comics are young, as you guys know, and Dante knows. And I would sit around at the open mics with them. And over the years, I noticed, you know, some of them had colorful backgrounds. And they wore ankle monitors. <laughs> and I wanted to fit in. So I got a life alert. <laughs> Participated in a the Plano Comedy Festival back in the fall. Oh, and again, they're all young, tatted, funny. I hate them. <laughs> then they go and they're showing off their tattoos to each other. And I, I, you know, I want to fit in. I don't have any tattoos. So I showed them my surgical scars. <laughs> I was born in 1950, 1950. I performed at the Firehouse Theater, historic Firehouse Theater, built in 1958. What does that make me? Yeah, that's right. Prehistoric. <laughs> Jurassic. The audience was old, and that's something coming for me. They were great, but they were old. And the reason I know that is that during the show, Half of them got up to pee. <laughs> the other half went right in their seats. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke for Al. <laughs> uh, you know how for deaf artists, uh, this audience was old, but you know how for deaf artists, people clap like this? Well, after the show, what I saw was this, and it was people banging their walkers on the floor. <laughs> audience was old they thought they said that their favorite streaming service was am radio oh, okay <laughs> i think we all can identify with that i just performed at the mgm grand in springfield massachusetts I had a wonderful time there it's great all in one place you've got gambling weed and wall burgers <laughs> Go across the street from the hotel. There's a pot shop right there. And I walk in and the guy tells me his name is Pot Squatch. Huh. And every, he says, everybody knows who I am. So me, you know, you want to do local color. I go to the show that night and, uh, you know, I scream out, hey, I met Pot Squatch. Nobody knew who he was. <laughs> I got squatch blocked. That's what happened. <laughs> Bought a vape from the uh, from the squatch, and I go back to my hotel room. Press the button, can't make it work. Have to read the instructions. Now we now we comes with instructions. <laughs> what happened to the old days? You rolled a joint, lit it with a match. Nobody knows what a match is. <laughs> Turns out you got to press the button five times to turn it on. You got to press the button five times to turn it off. And if you don't turn it off, the battery goes dead. And, and that's a lot of work. But it's worth it. <laughs> Definitely worth it. Because now I'm the pot squatch. <laughs> I understand that uh, many people suffer from anxiety. And, you know, weed helps anxiety. But I've heard that weed can also cause anxiety. And that happened to me in my younger years. I just smoked right through it. No weed <laughs> smoke, I read an article on sexual bias. 
and uh, you know what what how we form opinions about what we're sexually attracted to. And I got to tell you, for a 73 year old guy, my sexual bias is really simple. Is there a chance? Uh, really torn, really torn because young female friends will post on social media, really steamy pictures. I mean, very mm. steamy. And I want to like them, but I know I shouldn't like them, even though I like them and I want to like them. I know I shouldn't like them and I don't like them, even though I like them. <laughs> <laughs> There's a law in Virginia that allows for sterilization of imbeciles. And I don't know, if I was a Washington, D.C. politician like Ted Cruz, I think I'd live in Maryland. <laughs> I was going through the uh, book of uh, the Guinness Book of World Records, and I saw this photo of the tallest man, eight feet, 11 inches, and a little short guy, two feet, four inches. And in the photo, they're comparing feet size. And, you know, I was never a fan of dick pics, but I think that's one dick pic I'd like to see. <laughs> Not you guys, though, I guess. <laughs> All right. Uh, I've been married twice. I have a 100% divorce rate. <laughs> Going really well. I have a girlfriend now. She's beautiful. That's not the joke. She... Uh, She's beautiful. She's got short red hair, the face of a doll. Well, had the face of a doll. She fell, gashed open her forehead, got stitches and staples. Now I call her Chucky. Oh. <laughs> Chucky and I were on a road trip and um, he whispered in my ear, would you like a BJ while you're driving? What do you say to that? I said, yes. <laughs> Slide the seat all the way back, make headroom. I couldn't do it. My feet wouldn't reach the pedals. <laughs> when Chucky and I first started dating, I invited her to a show and um, I used to do this joke years ago. I did this joke. I'm getting married for a third time. And this time I absolutely positively, I'm not going to get divorced. During this marriage, I plan to die. <laughs> Chucky leaves the show. I call her. I say, well, what's going on? She goes, I don't date married men. I said, <laughs> married man. That was a proposal. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Both ex-wives are married now, and, and I'm not. Both ex-wives are pillars of the community, and, and I'm not. <laughs> Both ex-wives are still denying someone sex. I'm not. <laughs> Ex-wife number two just got remarried, and her father posted on Facebook, May you have everlasting joy and happiness. It's her third marriage, third marriage. <laughs> he should have said, may you have a good year or two. <laughs> I had four, like tires on a car, four good years. That's <laughs> uh, why uh, both ex-wives and both wives, are, they got both, they're both married. And they married Al Knockoffs. One's married to Alan, the other Alejandro. It's very distressing because Alan is a communist. Hmm. Alejandro is a bullfighter. That's a lot of red flags. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ex-wife number two was 20 years younger than me. I don't recommend that, not at all, because I had arthritis. She had goals. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that joke. <laughs> all right, dark humor. I love dark humor. The reason is that dark humor requires more intelligence than puns or knock-knocks, right? Who loves yeah. puns and knock-knocks? Kids, dads, and Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> Uh, 
local comic posts on Facebook for my birthday a few weeks ago, you are missed, Al, with a heart emoji. <laughs> he thinks I'm dead. He thinks I'm dead. And then my sons, they take me on a once-in-a-lifetime trip to Amsterdam. Once in a lifetime. It's like a death wish. That's what it sounds like to me. But I love Amsterdam. <laughs> Three of my favorite things. Tulips, weed, and prostitutes. <laughs> you know, I tell that joke in Plano, Texas. Very conservative. Red, red, red. Conservative. Lots of Karens. Plano. They applaud for prostitutes. Not you guys. <laughs> no, nobody's nobody's clapping for prostitutes. <laughs> While I'm there, I go to the Easy Times Cafe. I go in, I get mellow. I ask the guy, get in an Uber, ask him to take me to the red light district. As we're driving there, I don't know if you've ever been there. There are bicycles everywhere in Amsterdam. And he turns to me and he says, you know, in Amsterdam, we have more bicycles than people. And you know what, this. So I, I, I say to him, you know what? In Texas, we have more guns than people. And we shoot cyclists, you all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was not happy. <laughs> As I'm getting out of, the, out of the car, he says to me uh, at the red light district, he says, I think you should go in. You're old. You won't be back. So cab driver thinks I'm going to die. Well, I made the mistake of going in, and um, I regret it. I didn't get an STD. I got COVID, the Amsterdam strain. Oh, with it, you you know you you don't lose your appetite. You have the munchies, and mm. the cough is very unique because it originated in the red light district. The cough is a dry humping cough. <laughs> 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 when you cough, you know, and with long COVID, you know, with long COVID, it happens for the rest of your life. When you, when you, uh, when you cough, you're hump. Um, okay, uh, I love being sixty nine. I love being seventy three, but I really love being sixty nine. Um, I would tell people, "Hey, I'm sixty nine." They would say, "Nice." Now I say, "Hey, I'm seventy three." Yeah, exactly. They don't say shit. They don't, <laughs> they don't care. So to stay connected to 69, and I'm going to end on these, my 69 jokes. Here mm -hmm. we go. You know, what I, you know what I love about 69? It's the only sex act that's not sexist. You can be the six. You can be the nine. <laughs> you can be the nine. You can be the six. You can be a man with a man, a woman with a woman, a man with a woman, a man with two women. No, that, that's 70. <laughs> you know what I love about 69? There is no talking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Finally, you know what I love about 69? Since, uh, since COVID, it's the new safe sex. Yeah, oh. nobody's breathing on you. <laughs> I am Al Castellia. I am excited to be here. We've got a great show for you. We've got people from all over the country. Woo. Have a great show. Let's hear it. Let's get Yay. this show started. All right. Coming to us from San Antonio, formerly in Los Angeles. Very funny. I've seen her virtually. I'm looking forward to meeting her in person. Here she is from San Antonio, Mary Baquette. Hey, you guys, thank you. Keep it going for Al. Oh, my God, Al. Now I can't wait till I turn 69. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Looking forward to that day. I'm I'm really excited to be here. Uh, and thank you, uh, both you and Dante, for inviting me. You know, it's, it's so great to meet people from across the country. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but for this occasion, I got a spray tan. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, this is my skin color with a spray tan. Okay. <laughs> my friend is younger than me, and she was like, oh, did you get a spray tan because you're afraid of cancer? I'm like, no, I got a spray tan because I'm afraid I'm going to burst into flames when I go outside. 
freaking heat like a sheet of paper that I am. It's great being, you know, let's just say over 38. Yeah, it's great. It's great. <laughs> Actually, this was kind of a crazy week for me, you guys, because I had a gas leak in my house. Ooh. Yeah, and not the Taco Bell kind. <laughs> but I had a real natural gas leak, and it was the gas company who found out. They called me, and they sent someone over. They're like, something's wrong. And the guy walks into our house with, like, the gas meter, and he's like, oh, oh uh, let's open some windows. Don't turn on any lights. Are you guys some kind of cult or something? What's happening? It was crazy. He was all like, guys, they put a chemical in the gas. Couldn't you smell that? And I was like, you know what? I thought that was the cats. <laughs> it was driving me crazy. And I asked my friend, like, you came over. Didn't you smell it? And she was like, oh, I thought your house smelled that way because you're old. <laughs> that's great actually you know what guys i love getting older who's with me clap it up if you love getting older all right yay all right Most of <laughs> you us, don't have a choice <laughs> you know right we don't have a choice like for me uh, you know it's fun for me because i'm getting older with my husband who is older than me you know which i enjoy <laughs> quite a lot and and it's great because you know we love each other and like every morning when we wake up we just roll over and look at each other and compare bruises from the day before <laughs> like look that one looks like australia it's so great because you know what you guys this is actually true when you get to be my age you have to be very careful not to get injured because if you injured yourself, you might never heal. You could die with that bruise still there. Like a couple of weeks ago, I broke my toe. All right. And my, my same girlfriend was like, oh, my God. Did you break your toe doing something fun and exciting like skydiving? <laughs> I'm like, no, I was just trying to get some coffee from my coffee table. <laughs> you know, and my knee just went like, yeah, that's it. And just. Ugh. So my husband takes me to the emergency room. The doctor looks at my toe and she's like, oh, oh that looks painful. So twisted. I'm like. Not that one. It's that's 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 from Thanksgiving. It's that one. I had to explain to her. It's not the one that had roast beef. It's not the one that had none. It's the one that went to market on the left. <laughs> I do actually have a way to look younger. If any of y'all want to know, y'all want to hear about it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Here it is. Okay, here's what you do. You exercise every day with somebody who's older than you. <laughs> you cannot fail. <laughs> so for me, those people are getting harder and harder to find. <laughs> I suspect soon I might be working out in the graveyard. <laughs> Just doing <laughs> doing push-ups on the headstones. <laughs> Do you remember that time? <laughs> we went to Hemisphere, 1972. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I already have so many injuries. Like I can only do one kind of exercise and that is Pilates. Anybody here like Pilates? Snap it up if you like, I nobody. All right, this is going to go so great. <laughs> and you know what? Most of my injuries are from Pilates. So it's, it's great. It's the only type of exercise where they make you do your hands like this and your feet like this, right? <laughs> And then they take all your money and you cannot run after them. If I ever win the lottery, I have a plan to buy my own Pilates studio because I just love the idea of people sweating and suffering while I make money. That's what I like. 
actually guys i don't know maybe you guys can relate to this since we're not all going to pilates together anytime soon maybe you can relate to this i have been harassed lately by retirement planners <laughs> they're constantly calling me you know and they're like are you financially prepared for those years between when you stop working and your final dirt nap. So like, I'm not gonna share, all right, with you the results of that assessment. Cause why should you be depressed too? <laughs> but instead I wrote a letter. I wrote a letter to the people who did my assessment, grading them on their assessment. So this is my assessment of their assessment. Okay, here we go. Dear sir, thank you for sending a team of 25 year olds to tell me that I'm too broke to die. <laughs> I greatly appreciate it. According to your calculations, in order to have a nice retirement, I have to continue working for six more years after I am dead. <laughs> I have proposed this to my boss and he's taking it under advisement. You asked me what my retirement goals are. My retirement goals are to be nowhere near retirement. I would like for everyone to believe that I'm 38. <laughs> especially me and my knees. <laughs> In conclusion, I would like to point out that you sent a team of three men to assess me, a woman. Now, statistically, you should fire two of them and hire me and another old bitch to take their job. <laughs> P.S. I will need a raise. Sincerely, Mary McKay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys, I grew up, okay, in Texas in the 70s and do you know who was the most powerful person in my life for all my years and in the lives of all my friends our moms all right can we just give it up for moms <laughs> when i was growing up man moms ruled the world okay did y'all's mom ever do this you'd just be walking through she'd be walking through the store and all of a sudden she'd be like we're leaving <laughs> right and what what would you have to do when your mom did that you better follow her. That's right. You better follow her or you'll be left at that store. You'll be adopted by the state. The other day I was in HEB. That's our grocery store here in San Antonio. I see a mom do the pivot. Let's go. And her daughter says, bye, bitch. Are you good? If I had ever done that, I would not have reached the age of 38. I'd be dead. I would be dead. And like, I have millennial friends who are parents and like, man, I wish I could be treated the way these guys treat their kids, right? I wish that I could open up a day spa to be treated like people treat their kids just for one day. You know, I'd walk in and they'd be like, hi, and welcome to You Matter. <laughs> Would you like some juice? And now I'm gonna have you do some meaningless activity. And even if you're no good at it, you're gonna get a prize. <laughs> oh, that'd be so great. I swear to God, my millennial friends, as the tooth fairy, give their kids $5 per tooth. Y'all, when I was a kid, all the teeth in my entire mouth did not add up to $5. <laughs> and, you know, I unfortunately do not have kids, uh, which is just so normal in San Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> I just never have people coming up to me go like why why don't you have kids why don't you have kids why don't you 
<laughs> and like, I can't tell them the real reason, which is I'm an accountant and kids have zero return on investment. <laughs> Simply no ROI. Okay. And I, I can't tell them, you know, what my husband says. My husband always says, well, I don't have any kids that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that. So uh, I finally just started making stuff up. And now when they ask me, I tell them, uh, well, I used to have some kids, but uh, one day in the grocery store, one of them told me, bye, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> they're gone <laughs> <sighs> yeah you know now that we're kind of in this post pandemic world you know I I find that I miss traveling does anybody else miss like you know just just going away on long trips I don't know about y'all but I used to travel all the time just like well, let's go to Europe okay it has been years like I've, I've been to England has have any y'all been to England Anybody? Yeah. Okay. One person. You know what is the weirdest thing to me about England is they just talk so funny. <laughs> and they think that we have the accent. <laughs> right? Every British person is like, oh, your accent is so adorable. I know what I think every time I hear an American accent. I think, oh, she must be gluten free. <laughs> I'm like, that's not fair. Just because I'm an American, like, okay, I am gluten-free. <laughs> Coincidence. But here's what I think. Here's what I know. Every time I hear your British accent, I know you're a Bond villain. <laughs> okay. You guys mysteriously love British people. Okay, fine. That's fine. <laughs> uh, I've also traveled a lot to uh, Asia, to China. You might not be able to tell by looking at me, you guys, but I speak fluent Chinese. Yeah. That means, uh, please stop calling me Karen. <laughs> and you know uh, what is crazy today? China has such a bad name in America. Everybody hates China. Except possibly the Bidens. <laughs> <laughs> that's a red state joke okay yeah. right mostly they blame china for covid everybody's all oh the china virus because it's crazy like do people come to america and get sick and then go home and be all like oh man i caught the yankee doodle syphilis nah. <laughs> no they do not because that's dumb I think that Americans and Chinese people should be friends because like Chinese invented fireworks and we just love to blow shit up. <laughs> it's crazy. I see that. I see that. I think that, uh, and I'll close with this, you know, when I was learning Chinese, uh, nobody thought that I could actually do it. Not one person was like, oh, yeah, you got this. And, and the people who were the most discouraging, my teachers. <laughs> they would all be like, oh, Mali, your Chinese is terrible. And I'd be, look, guys, you know what? Your insults honor me. Thank you so much. I love Chinese culture. <laughs> All right, you guys have been great. Thank you so much. My All name right, is Mary Vickay. Mary Vickay. Beautiful stuff, Mary. Love it. Thank you very much. All right, let's keep it going. Thank from San Antonio. Let's hear it for her one more time. Thank oh, you, Mary. Oh, Thanks great. for being here. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Glad you're here. Very funny stuff. All right, we're going to Dallas, even though some people think he's from Lubbock. <laughs> you mean you people, you son of a bitch. <laughs> all right, here he is. He's my friend. I, I see him at open mics all the time. Glad he's here. He does the oldie mic occasionally. Here he is, Pat Cryer. Thank you. So this is my this is my first time doing one of these uh, shows for old people. Do I need to yell the entire time? Or are y'all going to have Garrett Morris in the corner doing comedy for uh, the hard of hearing? 
I mean, you have to be drawing Social Security to understand that reference whatsoever. <laughs> so uh, it's uh, it's hot, hot here in Dallas. And when it's hot, I like to uh, I like to stop at a 7-Eleven, get a little Slurpee, nice little frozen beverage. But you know, you got to be quick because you got to get got to get in, get your Slurpee, get back in your your car before the interior reaches 212 degrees. Because not your Slurpee will just start boiling immediately. So, so I stopped early today and I did. I was quick. I got in. I got my Slurpee. I got in line and I got stuck in line behind one of these lottery players. You know, you know what I'm talking about. They got uh, they got the big stack of cards and they're turning them in. The cashier's taking forever and he finally comes back and says, "All right, you got 18 bucks." <laughs> now, does Mildred? cash in her 18 bucks and head over to the Dairy Queen to get her nice uh, banana split? No. What does she do? Uh, yeah. Give me a stack of cash and a cash mania. And then they always got to check that other counter. Hold on. And then, yeah, give me one of those, uh, the cash blitz. No, 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 not that one. No, no, that one, that one. Just taking forever. And I'm thinking, how come the, there's no truth in advertising laws in the government's own lottery, you know? Because really what she should be saying is, uh, can I have a waste of money and uh, flush my money down the toilet? And can I get a quick pick for tonight's mega pipe dream? <laughs> That's what should be happening. And the thing is, anytime you go out after uh, Mildred, there's always some old beaten down guy in the car. He ain't even coming in. He don't want to go through this. And so today I had to yell at him. Look, Grandpa, you need to be in there with us suffering in this line waiting for Mildred to get done. Now, the thing is, my mom's one of these lottery players. She's over at the house the other day. I said, Mom, did you get your Powerball ticket? She goes, it's only at 30 million. It's not worth playing until it gets to 300 million. <laughs> you live in a trailer. It's not even a double wide. Are you trying to tell me $30 million is not enough money to accommodate you in the lifestyle to which you become accustomed. You got to have $300 million for that. You keep making fun. And when I win, I'm not going to give you any money. You know what? You know what, mom? I'm going to take my chances with that. All right, mom. All right. So uh, I'm thrilled to be here. Very thrilled to be here. Of course, at home, I have a wife and six kids. So really, I'm just thrilled to be anywhere, actually. Uh, I actually have no interest in comedy whatsoever. I'm just trying to find reasons to get out of the house, you know. <laughs> you know, six kids, uh, you know, now they're getting older, people will ask, what do you what do you want for your kids? You want them to be professionals, doctors, lawyers, athletes. You know, at this point, I just settle for somebody getting their own car insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe their own cell phone plan. I don't know. How about moving out of state? Yeah, kids, uh, kids suck. Kids suck. Uh, no offense if any kids are listening out there. <laughs> the thing is, you worry about your kids from the moment they're born to the day you die. You worry about your kids every day. And to me, it's uh, deep down. I know I didn't raise them right. So if they turn out bad, that's probably that's probably on me. <laughs> So uh, I've been with my wife now over 40 years. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want that now. I don't want that. <laughs> you know, frankly, uh, feels longer. Feels longer than that. A lot longer, feels like. But I'm trying to hang on, trying to hang on to this marriage. There was a while there I thought she was wanting a divorce, and I need to hang on to her. Because, I mean, look at me. Look at me. <laughs> What are the odds I can find another nearsighted woman with a weak sense of smell? I would end up dying alone. So I am trying to hang on, trying to hang on. You know, it's kind of scary based on what she watches on TV. I think maybe in lieu of divorce, she may be just trying to get rid of me. The Purge, Murderville, Snapped. Snapped, that's, that's the scariest one. I don't know if y'all are familiar with uh, Snapped, but it's a show about women who snap and kill their husbands. Yeah. 
There are 32 seasons of this show. <laughs> 32. 571 episodes. That means, uh, that means a few things. One, there's way too many women interested in this topic. And a lot of dead husbands out there. Nobody seems to care about. Not only does my wife uh, watch every episode, uh, she's taking notes. Not only is she watching and taking notes, she sends fan mail. Dear Betty, congratulations on getting rid of your worthless husband. You are an inspiration to us all. I hope you make parole soon. So even if my wife isn't trying to divorce or kill me, she is just plain mean to me. Yeah. Honey, I signed you up for a quilting class. Well, that's, that's great. Now I have a big blanket to help smother out the last of my testosterone. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's a class isn't what you think. It's actually, it's actually a good class. Uh, I'm in with a group of reform gang members. Yeah. They're quilting as therapy to deal with their violent past. Old oh, man, what gang were you in? Mm -hmm. Southside AARP. <laughs> Arthritis chapter. We don't actually have a gang sign. Some of my hands just do that. Oh, <laughs> all right. I don't want to lie. I don't want to lie to all you people. The class is exactly what you think. It's me and 30 old ladies. That's what it is. <laughs> but, you know, uh, Quilting with old ladies is, you know, it's kind of like being in a gang fight. Yeah. It's all fun and games till somebody gets taken away in an ambulance. <laughs> Happens every class, every class. And the thing is, these old ladies always have something to say. You know, I told my husband he should come to the class because there was another man in the class and it would be fun. And he said there may be a male in the class, but there's not a man. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> you know what? Why don't you step off, Mildred? All right, you step off. And now my seam's all crooked. I know you can't tell by looking at me, but I did. I used to be a man. I used to be a man. <laughs> and, I, and I went from very athletic to know what a seam ripper is real quick. You don't know what a seam ripper is. It's but if your seam's crooked, you got to rip it out so you can redo it. I shouldn't have to know that. Okay, but I do. That's very sad. Very sad. And I've kind of gotten to where I'm that uh, for your age age. You know what I mean? No, you, you look in pretty good shape <laughs> for your age. <laughs> it's like, here, please take this compliment. You know, here, take it. And then just boom. All right, let me leave y'all with this, and then I'm going to get on out of here. So as an, apparently I'm an old sickly man, because all the targeted ads I get are all for drug commercials. And the thing is, they make these people, these debilitating diseases, seem like they have real kick-ass lives, you know? Hot air balloon rides, parties, mountain biking. Man, makes me wish I had moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. <laughs> The thing is, all these commercials, they got to be at least 60 seconds because they got to spend half the time telling you all the things that can go wrong. Right? And it always starts out, they got the upbeat music, the lady's getting on her bike, about to head into the head into the mountains. And then that voice comes out and goes, hey, just so you know, side effects include headache, fatigue, eyelid inflammation, swelling of your face, cancer, blood clots, death. Enjoy your bike ride. <laughs> all right you people enjoy your bike rides or your hover round rides your little rascal ride, whatever it is you're riding <laughs> thank you very much all right let's hear it for him pat crier good stuff pat great to see you thank you let's hear it for him pat crier hey pat great stuff pat thank you uh all right let's keep it moving we're going to the west coast beautiful city of tacoma probably 30, 40 degrees less than the temperature in Texas. Yeah. But she's a hot comedian. Here she is, Janice Fox. Woo woo, Janice. Hi, hello there. Yeah, um, excited to be here at the age of 69. Now, um, 
I'm not getting a day older till I hit 96 and it has nothing to do with my ego. I happen to be dyslexic. <laughs> now, um, a lot of people don't know, I did not talk until I was over four years old. We're talking the 1950s, right? Mother takes me to the doctor and he says, don't feed her till she talks. And as you can see, I became quite the conversationalist. <laughs> now, it was about four or five years ago, I came up with this brilliant idea of how to add money to my retirement fund. You know, do a little bit of stand-up comedy. So far, I'm down $4,000 for the comedy classes. <laughs> Now, my husband and I, we really discussed this. We were 65, just bought an RV, going to tour the United States anyway. I mean, we knew either way we we're going to end up sleeping in Walmart parking lots. <laughs> now, looking at me, you might not be able to tell, but I do get my exercise. I mean, every day my husband and I drive up to the store, I jump out, I run as fast as I can up to the front to get into one of those little electric scooters, and then I chase him around the parking lot. The other day I got in a lot of trouble. Manager came out and he says, lady, you can't be chasing that old man around the parking lot, yelling charge, charge, charge. I said, yes, I can, he's my husband. And he has my credit cards. <laughs> now, um, today I finally went by the bathroom mirror and I have come to the conclusion that the only athletic thing that will ever be on this body is a sports bra. <laughs> now, I have tried all the diets. Let me tell you in this last one, this uh, fasting diet, you eat a lot, you know, you eat in a specific time and the only thing I've gotten from that is how to eat a whole lot of food in a shorter amount of time now you can't tell but my legs are pretty doggone white and there's a reason for that I stopped wearing pantyhose it was taking my husband and I an hour and a half to get them up he would grab the back I would grab the front and start jumping up and down and up and down and up and down the floor started undulating me it gets seasick it was like trying to pour a hundred pounds of sugar into a one pound sack <laughs> now being a hundred percent white isn't what it's all talked up to be I mean every single time I go to a hotel I go down to the pool all the beach when you start fighting over who gets to sit next to me they found they get a better tan off the reflection of my skin than they do the sun. Now, something that annoys me, a woman my age, these young girls come up to me and they say, oh, is that your natural hair color? Yes, it is. And I keep it that way every six weeks. <laughs> Now, I finally found out where all this dark hair comes from. I had one of those DNA tests and found out I'm 1% Italian, 1% Jewish, and 98% Revlon. Now, a lot of people say 1% Jewish doesn't count. Well, let's ask any white supremacist group about that. <laughs> Now let's talk circumcision here. Uh, Jewish men are circumcised for their higher power, but American men, Mr. Cornflake himself, encouraged American men to be circumcised so that they wouldn't grow hair on their palms and go blind. He figured it was a cure-all to have men circumcised or baby circumcised for a cure for buttering their corn cob. Now, getting older is petrifying. And that's why so many of the elderly wear so much yellow. It's actually a caution sign. 
Now mine used to read slippery when wet. And now it says watch for her falling rocks. <laughs> now, the other day, oh, my husband, don't go this way. My husband and I, we've been together about 30 years. And yeah, we have pet names for each other. He calls me honeybee, that's short for honey bitch. And I call him choppers because that man will eat anything. And I'm talking anything, this whole wide world except my cherry pie. <laughs> he says it's just too damn tart. Now my husband went by the bathroom mirror the other day. And he says to me, he says, oh, honey, I'm growing man boobies. I said, oh, honey, honey, that's okay. At least we'll have one pair of perky boobies between us. Now I am a mom, an M-O-M, a mother of millennials. And uh, I had three sons over the course of 16 years. I named, whoops, the most one. And not again. Now, Most Wanted loves teasing his brothers about being the only chosen son in the family. If only that had full new out of the three, he'd be the first one I'd throw back. Now, my daughter, I adopted her at 16 months, all gain, no pain. Eventually grew up, joined the army, and came out loving everybody. And I mean loving everybody. She insists I call her my wild child. Oh, I call her my slut. <laughs> Sweet, lovable, and intentional tease, just like me. Now, I can remember when my youngest child got too old to bathe with me anymore. We stepped into a shower stall. He was about two. He looks up and says, oh, mommy, you have a beard just like daddy's. <laughs> now, um, sometimes when you're married for as long as I do, you get in your little arguments. And uh, I used to give my husband a silent treatment. So I would eat a can of beans. Now, with dementia coming on, all I have to do is go in the bedroom, sit on the bed, and wait him out. Come out, he forgets all about it. Now, um, some things, some things I don't understand is these young girls out there. They are all worried about the size of a man's penis. How long, how short, how thick, how thin. They've got it all wrong. It's not, it's not the size of a man's penis they need to be worrying about. But what's attached to the penis? Like a job, an STD, a wife. <laughs> now, um, I am a retired nurse, and I like I like um, learning about things. You know, I like researching. And um, one thing I've always wondered about now, you know, I was married first time twenty years, four kids, didn't have much thought to it. But I always wondered what our sex orgy is all about. So I googled it, and then I had an epiphany. Sex orgies are just like my dishwasher. There's always room for one more. Now, I found an article the other day that stated that the regular use of a vibrator on your vagina actually keeps it younger. True story. I did the calculations. Mine is about 23 years old. <laughs> now, 
my husband, he goes to the doctors, he comes home, he says, I've got bad news, I've got some good news. I said, what's wrong, honey? He said, well, I came down with Parkinson's. I said, oh, okay, we'll deal with that. What's the good news? You don't have to buy batteries anymore. <laughs> now, um, here's something for the older women, any younger girl. You young girls, what is this obsession with shaving the fuzz off your peach? Don't you know that your bushy forest down there loses trees throughout the years until you're left with a barren desert and a watering hole that dries up from time to time? Believe me, massive climate change in your southern regions. <laughs> now, the other day, my husband and I, we were um, driving around town and I did get impatient. He pulled up to an intersection and it would be zoom, 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 pause, then zoom, 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 pause, then zoom, 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 and I said, go, go, go. He says, I'll pull out when I'm goddamn good and ready, says a man with six kids. <laughs> no. Not too sure how much time I have left here. You got about three minutes. Okay, about three minutes. So, when it comes to millennials, my son comes over and I says, you know, we're downsizing. We're downsizing. We need to take all these trophies home. He says, Mom. You bought them. You earned them. You keep them. <laughs> <laughs> no. You can tell I'm used to a lot more laughter. Here. <laughs> 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 it's like, it's like, um, oh, like, the other night, you know, I was tired of ran I climbed into bed, right? And um, right before then, I had a tuna fish sandwich, and in comes my choppers. And he was like a submarine with no sonar. He didn't know whether to go up or down. <laughs> <laughs> My next door neighbor is talking to her. Her grandson moved in. I said, well, how's that going for you? He says, well, pretty good. You know, he's happy. He's in his room doing video games most of the day. And then he works at the corner store. I mean, he's actually in euphoria. I said, oh, well, what's grandpa think about that? Well, he's pretty happy because he, can, he does the dishes. He takes the garbage out, he cleans up the doggy poo, the kitty poo, and the grandpa poo. So it's a win-win situation. <laughs> <laughs> Here is a trans. This is people call this a trans joke, and I don't. If you're a man and you walk into a bar and you see a long-legged, beautiful woman sitting up there. And you sit down and you start having this conversation and you're talking about booties and different things in the bedroom and she gets really excited about it. You better stop and check her for an Adam's apple because as we all know, most women don't like getting their job. Thank you. That's my time. <laughs> all right. Let's hear it for Janet's box. Taking us to the uh, <laughs> Netherlands. You know, when you did the cherry, cherry pie joke, I thought you were going to go somewhere else. So uh, <laughs> I was a little disappointed, Janice. I All right, what a show. Let's hear it for ourselves. Let's hear it for Mary Bacay, Pat Cryer, and Janice Fox, and our producer, the one and only Dante Barnett. What a show. We'll be back on November 4th. November 4th, and I got the date right this time. <laughs> Have a good Thanks day. Bye. <laughs> Bye. All right.